Uh, the first thing, and this is just very recent, Mike Coppinger talked to Dwayne The Rock Johnson about how WrestleMania uh, came to be and went through the whole detail of the training and how the whole thing happened. And then at the very end of this piece, there's a quote where Rock says, we're on the one yard line to create the biggest WrestleMania of all time and the biggest match of all time at WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. I'll just leave it at that final boss style. So he is still on his wrestling brain right now, it seems. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they. he is very much, you know, and I, I presume a lot of this is because of his parents, you know, and growing up and, and you know, his, his grandparents father and grandmother were promoters his father was paid based on houses he has a brain that works very much on the idea of you know both whether it's movies or, or wrestling or probably everything that he does on um trying to set records you know and i think that uh whatever records were set this past year he wants to break them and you know you gotta to, to break those records you know you got to um i mean they're gonna be higher ticket prices and that'll break the records but uh you know, the viewership records and things like that. I mean, you're going to have to have a pretty big event because like the first year back after 10 years gone is going to be bigger. Just like the first rock Cena was bigger than the second one. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to have a, a better story and a better buildup uh, to break that record. I mean, now granted uh, he was not in the championship match as he was originally supposed to be. Um, and he most likely will be this year. Um, you know, I, I've asked about like, you know, I mean, basically like I look at this and go like, Cody can't lose the title for a year. And the kind of the thing is, is, well, you know, I mean, he could, you know, this isn't net, it, you know, this isn't necessary about, you know, about that. And that's why we get the, the you know, Dwayne has that people's belt thing out there as a, backup and that's the reason they brought that into the discussion when they shot that angle is you know if the decision is made for cody to lose although i have no idea who he would lose it to um and and why you would do that before, you know you know what i mean other than it makes the rest of the year you know i don't know i don't say not exciting or anything like that but if people figured out like hey cody can't lose this thing for for a year it's you know, I don't know. You know, it, it kind of takes something out of like all these championship matches, like the one tomorrow, where like, yeah, I, that's what I just was thinking like they have already sort of telegraphed the first three months that there's no way in hell he's losing, so um, you only got to do it for another nine months, and I guess you're good. <laughs> yeah, whoa, hold on, espresso causing Man, problems with Dave's headset right. with his espresso microphone. He already, uh, he already was doing some pre-show barking too. Yeah, yeah. All um, right, I'm back. No, yeah, just you know, they've already sort of made Cody's first three title defenses like semi-unimportant. I feel as a viewer, like I mean, I, I mean, the only, the only thing, I mean, the the one tomorrow. I mean, the only thing is, is like how good of a match is it's going to be? Because I don't think anyone in the world thinks AJ can win, and and quite frankly. He shouldn't win. No way. There's absolutely no reason that he should win. Um, and I mean, that kind of goes for, you know, a lot of the card, you know, and I guess people will say the same thing about AEW too. You know, there's a lot, a lot of championship matches where you just look at him and go, this challenger can't win. And I mean, in the, and, and, and look in the majority of cases of pro wrestling championship matches, the challenger doesn't win. Um, but you want, I think that for the big ones, you want the idea that it's, it's possible, but um Yeah. Um, I mean, the one thing with, with Priest and McIntyre is, is that, you know, there is, there are two very viable scenarios where either one could win, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that, that, I think that's the more interesting match and probably should go on last. Yeah. Um, and, um, if it doesn't, you know, well, you know, whatever, but, um, but Cody, to me, Cody and AJ is just, they're going out there to try to do a really good, I quit match even without, you know, and make it dramatic and, just do the best with the gimmick. How do you make that match dramatic, though? We'll you really out. have to suspend disbelief, or maybe they're hoping more casuals tune in than normal, but I don't know about that one. Well, we'll find out. I don't know. 
Um, that's what they're there for. You know, that's what good, good wrestlers are there to make you suspend disbelief, even with full knowledge that you're not going to see a championship change. I guess the other match that is pretty interesting also because of the storyline is Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. will see some sort of advancement with Otis. Otis is the, uh, the fan favorite right now, as far as the crowd is concerned, whenever, he doesn't even have to say anything, and the crowd is just wondering what he's going to do next. When is he going to finally strike back well, at, at Chad Gable? He, you know, he has to do it, and the idea is is that you don't do it for as long as possible before he starts suffering because he hasn't done it for so long. So you just want to, you know, you want it to go as long as it can because it's tough. Once he does it, you know, this isn't this isn't like, um, you know, somebody who's going to go and then like turn and then win the intercontinental title i don't think and certainly not the world title so it's kind of like okay he turns he has his matches with chad gable and then he's just a guy yeah but as long as they do this you know he's kind of in an exciting program so the idea is to get this program drag it along or, or make it go as long as you can but eventually you've got to pull the trigger um but you don't want to pull the trigger late to where people stop caring. So it's kind of a fine balance. Um, and I think, I mean, you know, they, they could do it this week. I mean, people are ready for it. I mean, it wouldn't be too early, but I don't know that it's, um, I don't know that you can't peak it a little later as well. I kind of feel like he's going to finally strike up the nerve to do it. And he's going to accidentally hit Sammy leading to the finish. Oh, I could see that easily. And then, well, I mean, I think that the idea, maybe the best idea for this show is to have something happen, but have it be ambiguous. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To where it's like, you don't know which, what he was going to do, but it ends up with Gable winning. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably time for Gable to win anyway. I yeah, think. I think so. So G Gable, Gable winning when Otis's attempt to help Sammy backfires and then Sammy's mad because he doesn't trust him and, you know, that's a that's a very viable story. I don't know that's what they're going to do, but it's it's a viable one. I liked the comparison of Jade and Bianca to the Road Warriors because <laughs> yeah. that is who they are. And yeah. that is what this match is for. Um, In theory, unless they get very sympathetic because of, um, you know, Kaylee. Kaylee uh, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of because of. Her, you know, her mother dying and being in in Glasgow, you know, in being, you know, and everything like that. It's possible they may give her the feel good moment. Obviously, under normal circumstances, that that would never happen. Um, and the, the the thing about being able to do that is that you can just beat, you know, um, Shane or Zoe. I mean, you're not going to beat Jade or Bianca, and then just go back and change it back, you know, in a singles match later. You could viably do that. Um, you know, I don't expect it, but I don't rule that one out completely, especially because, you know, it's the only way to make sense out of that two minute job they just did, because that made no sense at all. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, just, you know, so if they do come back and score the upset win, at least you can go, hey, you know, um, you know, they can defend against Shane and Zoe because they beat him really quick. And they obviously had that other defense back where they would lose it back to, you know, Jade and Bianca. So, um, you know, that's the options. So I don't, I don't know that this is a 30 to one, like, uh, or even a 12 to one just because of, um, I mean, it would have been under normal circumstances. It would have been. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see what the line is tomorrow morning and then it'll probably tell us something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably will. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bailey and Piper Niven rounds out at least the show, the car, the, the matches that are on the show as of today, right. have, have, by the way, have you seen Bailey do the gimmick on, uh, I think she's d done it on Instagram, maybe on Twitter where, she does like the air squats and then she's like juggling at the same time. <laughs> like, I don't know no. what, 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 what the reason is, but it's kind of fun to hmm. see, uh, you know, she, I guess there's like a concentration thing in addition to the, to the squats or whatever. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.